So let us turn our Bibles to Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13. The scripture reads, Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. Father, this is your word. It is true. It is potent. Just in the form that it is, as I bring some revelation to it, mighty God, we pray that your perfect will be done this morning in Jesus' name. And let God's people say, Amen. 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 Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of who? Some of us. All mankind. My title for this morning is Success Chasers. Success Chasers. What is success? Success can be defined as achieving the goals you have set for your own life. Let me say that again. Success can be defined as the goals that you set for what? Your own life. I remember some months ago, myself and a, about two other friends who were sitting and we were talking about blessings and what, you know, what are really, you know, what are blessings? What do we consider blessings to be? And the conversation went uh, along the line of, you know what I mean, blessings is, you know what I mean, having a car, having money, having house. And I thought to myself that blessings can be quite relative. You know, blessings can be whatever we believe are blessings to our own lives. Likewise, it is the same for success. But the question is, success in our eyes, is it the same way God sees it in his eyes? Because what we see as success could be something totally different from what God sees as success. And that's why I will leave it at success is relative. Because if your goals for your life is to have a good education, to get your bachelor's, then you go on to your master's, and you probably go further in your studies and you achieve that. And then you move from there to say, okay, I want to be married. I want to have children. And you get all of that. So probably when you look at your life, you can say, wow, my life is quite successful. According to the standards that you have set for yourself. But again, is it success in God's eyes? Now, what or who is a chaser? If you're thinking about liquor, something wrong with you. <laughs> right? But what or who is a chaser? A chaser is a person or a thing that pursues someone or something. I don't know if you have ever seen a car chase in real life. Or most of us, we may have seen it watching the movies. And we can see that when, you know, a car is being chased. The person chasing the car is very reckless at chasing them and the person trying to get away from the person who is chasing them is very reckless. So therefore, anything happens. Meaning that when a chase is on, if managa get run over, managa get run over. If table got turn over, table got get turn over. If it means that red light I forget broke, red light I got get broke. And this is what many of us have become. We have become success chasers. We are chasing success so much that the love of God cannot be found in us. We are chasing success so much that we don't care about who we hurt. We just need to get what we want to get. Because what we have to understand is that worldly success is different from kingdom success. 
You see, we have people being very depressed and down because they feel as if, wow, I'm almost 40 and I'm not married yet. Who told you that marriage was success? Wow, I am almost 45 or I'm almost 38 because this is more uh, realistic. I'm almost 38 and I've not had a child yet. Who told you that having a child is success? I'm sure some mothers here want to give away. <laughs> but, but who told you that having a child was success? And just sitting and thinking about this whole concept, I realize that we're living our lives daily trying to meet the standards of what the world has set to say that this is what success is and this is what success looks like like and it is far from the truth let somebody say far from the truth it is so far from the truth because you see worldly success is measured by crowd it is measured it is measured by numbers if you're talking about ig it is measured by followers how many followers do i have and if it look like i'm clocking over a hundred thousand people that mean i'm very successful they want to feel as if they're doing something. They want to feel loved. They want to feel accepted. They want to feel appreciated. And let me tell you something. If you have to, if you have to strip naked for somebody to appreciate you, it don't make no sense. No sense whatsoever. So success, in a worldly standpoint, it's about... <laughs> Which school did you go to? Is it one of the traditional high school? And we wear it so proudly. Like, you know, we wear the color bar thing. They're very proudly, right? A source of flesh. But I wear it so proudly. And then if you never went to a traditional high school and somebody asks you, so which school you went to? That's not important. But can't want nobody know, say, you know what I mean? I don't know Trinity, you know. <laughs> I don't know the all you come from, you know? Because society set things that way that even if you don't go to a certain school, you're not somewhat successful at the high school that you attended. And it is so far from the truth. So watch this. So we measure success by, uh, well, the world measures success by car, house, whether you're married and you have children. But you see, the kingdom of God is so simple. <laughs> the kingdom of God measures success by how obedient you are to God. Now, the scripture that we open with, put it back on, this, on, the, on the projector, Somi, please. This scripture was basically some of the last words uttered by King Solomon. And again, it says, Now all has been heard. Here's the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the duty of all mankind. Now, let us talk about King Solomon for a bit. King Solomon was obviously from the lineage of King David. He was anointed and appointed by God. He was put in place to build a temple which he did. A very beautiful temple for God. He made some very wise judgment as a king that made him quite popular. Among his people. But sadly, Solomon failed to continue acting in obedience with God and God's wisdom when he started to do things his own way. Solomon became so popular as a king, then all of a sudden, this man ended up with how much? 700 wives from royal birth. Just imagine one man of 700 wives. How am, how am I do? <laughs> when it comes to gold, when it comes to silver, when it comes to all these precious stones, Solomon had it all. But yet still, at that time, when he was about to depart from this earth, his conclusion was the whole duty of mankind is to do what? It's to fear God and the what? No. I'm almost certain 
in terms of earthly riches, none of us here don't have it like how Solomon had it. And if he had it all, and this was his conclusion, this is a man who walked the life. He knew what it is to have more than one woman. More than two. More than three. All right, we'll get the point. He knew what it was to have riches in abundance. And that was his conclusion. Only says to me that success without God at the center of your life is no life at all. You know, if we were supposed to measure success from a worldly standpoint, I believe it's fair to say that Jesus was a failure. Yeah. If we were supposed to measure Jesus from a worldly, worldly standpoint, I think it's fair to say that Jesus was a failure. Have you ever thought about it that we serve a God we aspire to be like a Jesus that never owned a house Jesus never had horses and chariots in the borrow one donkey one time borrow Jesus never get married Jesus never have no children of his own. So if we're talking about. Worldly. Success. It's fair to say that Jesus. Was a failure. Jesus was not a liar. Was not a doctor. Mark you know. He'll worry about people. But according to the papers. He wasn't a doctor. According to, to the papers. He was a carpenter. In this lifetime, we never even get carpenter and props. But according to worldly standards, Jesus would have been a failure. And that's how some of us sit down and feeling like failures because we have not accessed the things that the world has set as a standard for success. Now, when I thought about my life as being a pastor, what makes me successful at, past, at the pastoral? Is it because... We are growing in numbers? No. No. You see, on a very fleshly day, you would look and say, yes, we are growing in numbers. I'm being very successful. No. Because 150 of us could sit in here this morning. But truth be told, if the Lord was supposed to return now, Would we find 10 that will make it? You know, sometimes I do get down when things are not going the way that I think it's supposed to go. But then the Lord has to remind me that, son, you are winning. You see that one baptism you had yesterday? You are winning. You see that 31 that you have baptized since the year start? You are winning. You see, many of us, we are winning in areas that we don't see as success because the world does not put that on a pedestal to say this is success. <laughs> okay, so you might not have a great education, but... You see those two kids that you're taking care of that don't even belong to you because the mother can't afford it, but you're making sure that they have lunch money and to send them to school. You're, you're not understanding. You're being very successful. Because Jesus said, suffer the little children. He says that if you take care of one of these, we're doing it unto him. And we find that a lot of believers are straying away 
from the mindset of what kingdom success is because they're on a chase for what they think is success but is very worldly. Am I saying that there's a problem owning a house and a car? No. But if you have to step on people, be little people, walk away from your calling that God has placed on your life, then you are not being successful. A few weeks ago, we spoke about occupation versus purpose. And we were going through it. You're talking about Jesus Christ. We're talking about Jesus Christ and from a worldly perspective, he was not successful. But in true essence, Jesus lived the most successful life ever because he knew what he was about. He was about his father's business. He did not come down here to do anything more than what God had anointed him for. When you're talking about being selfless, that was Jesus. Many of us, our pursuit for success, we have become very selfish. When you talk about uh, uh, being compassionate, Jesus was very compassionate. Matthew 9 and 35 to 36 says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages. Teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowd, he had what? Compassion on them. Many of us who have lost our compassion. We have lost our compassion for people in this chase for success. Now let me ask you a question. When you have stepped on everybody to get where you want to go. If you ever fall down, I will go pick you up. I was sitting with Sir Galvin. I was giving him the name of the theme so that they could do the artwork. And he said, sir, is another rebuke message this? So I'm going to laugh because I said, oh, you make it sound so. I must say nothing. But the point to me, I said, boy, Sir Gav, this is just my calling. Because truth be told, if I wanted to preach about blessings and Money are going to come and doors are going to open. It is the easiest thing to do. It is so easy. It is so easy. But you see, it's messages like these that help people to look into themselves and realize where we are going wrong so that we can fix it and knit it in the bud before it's too late. Because, you see, God is a merciful God, but if we play the fool too long, we will get left behind. What are you chasing at the cost of losing everything that God has anointed you for? You see, working for earthly spoils, is a, it's good, it's good. But when you can secure an eternity with God, it's much better. Let me say that again. When you're working for earthly spoils, it's good. But when you can secure an eternity with God, it is so much better. Matthew 19 and verse 28, or verses 28 to 29 says, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones. Judging the 12 tribes of Israel and everyone who has left houses, our brothers, our sisters, our father, our mother, our wife, our children, our fields, for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. This is our inheritance. When we can leave all these things behind to walk in total obedience to God's voice and the directions that he's given unto us. You see, God's word just cannot lie. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Why we want to cut out righteousness? 
to get things. When all is sin, walk the path of righteousness and everything will be added unto you. You know what is happening in the world today? The enemy is basically offering people what already belongs to you. He said to Jesus, worship me and all of this. When Mary the scripture and I'm Edward Messer, what all of this don't belong to Jesus already. So why Jesus is going to worship him for something that already belongs to him. Whatever you need, God has already supplied it. It is obedience that will get us, that will get us tapping into it. It is sometimes we just cannot see it. Sometimes we are not tapping into it because we are doing our own thing. There's no way you can walk in disobedience and receive everything that God has for you. No, you could be in a situation right now where that's how you feel. Because you're chasing something that you're not even supposed to be chasing. Because the very thing that you're chasing is more leading you away, leading you away from your purpose than actually aligning you with your purpose. Anything that you're doing that is pulling you far away from God, I can tell you, say, it's not in the will of God. I don't care how many exams you have to study for. I don't care what you have to do with the children. If the children is pulling you away from God, something's still not balanced. I want to talk about pulling away from God. I'm not talking about you, you, you miss a one service. I'm talking about your personal relationship with God. Because sometimes our children become our gods without we even knowing. I don't know about you, but there was a time in my life where it was all about, I have to be successful. I have to get the car by a certain age and I have to get this and, you know, you know I turn 35 soon and I'm going to see. Woman. Look here, earth is not forever. You can't take nothing with you. You understand? Why are we missing our purpose? Because we are chasing success. This week, I want you to pray like you have never prayed before. I want you to get into the word like you have never gotten in the word before. I want you to worship God like you have never worshipped God before. I mark my words. You're going to realize that he's going to give you some clear directions. To what you need to do. You only have one life to live. Do not miss. What God has in store for you. At the cost. Of chasing. What you call success according to our worldly standard. Stand to your feet.